For years now, humans have been working on augmented reality to mix the virtual with the real. However, I've always wondered, what if you want to go the other way around and bring the real into the virtual? Well, there has been a much smaller group of people working on doing exactly this. By creating very exact 3D models of the real world and bringing them into virtual reality. There's apps and games based upon this, and if done well, it can look absolutely beautiful and let you traverse amazing places on our planet just by putting on a VR headset. But how difficult is it to do something like this yourself? Say you want to create a scan of your room or create a scan of some place in real life and bring it into VR chat. Well, we've done something very similar to this on the channel a few years back, but today we're bringing it up a few notches. So what is up everyone? I'm Mystical, and today we're going to be bringing a local cliff into VR chat. So let's jump right in. The process that makes this all happen is called photogrammetry, and it requires quite a bit of dedication, or in my case, automation. You see, I decided that this time I want to go big, and I want to bring an entire local cliffside into VRChat and see whether VRChat will even take it and how accurate it will be. So I got my DJI Mavic Pro, which is by no means a new drone, downloaded an app onto my phone called Drone Deploy that will allow me to map out a route and allow the drone to be completely automated and taking images. Now it was a quite sunny day and there were a lot of things actually against me at this moment because when it's sunny, there's tourism, and when there's tourism, there's constant things moving. Either way, I think we got pretty good results, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. The way this works is the drone gets an automated flight path, flies around in a linear path, and takes hundreds of images straight down at whatever you're trying to scan. Later on, I also have it set to take images at a 45 degrees angle around the perimeter in order to get a bit more detail on vertical objects. Unfortunately, this turns out to not be the perfect way to do it, and I will be going back to take more manually, but for this video, it was more than enough. The flight path ended up being 830 images, 40 minutes of flight time, and 3 batteries. So uh, I was very lucky that they actually had chargers on the beach. And let me tell you, this was quite surreal. Drone is successfully on the flight map. I'm keeping an eye on it. It's over water right now, which seems about right. It's moving along. We had a few issues. The controller disconnected a few times, but it's definitely going. It's taking the pictures and we have 38 minutes to go. The drone flies around, takes the images and then lands every time it needs a new battery and just asks me for a new one. That was, that was pretty damn cool. It's not like I was able to get anything else done within those 40 minutes though as I was constantly looking at the drone controller screen for safety reasons, just in case anything was to happen, I was always ready to take over manual control. That, and I actually ended up realizing that it was against the law not to be able to see your drone, so I had to walk around and follow it everywhere, which actually ended up being kind of funny. But once the drone was done taking the images, I took it home and copied them all to my computer. I deleted a few images that I thought were not going to be usable, as there was either way too much motion in them, or they were just images of the floor, as the drone was taking off because those would do us absolutely no good. Then I downloaded a software called Open Drone Map. Open Drone Map is actually a really cool piece of software. It allows you to create orthographic images of a certain landmass, allowing you to overlay that over maps and create a more accurate representation of something like Google Maps at a really high resolution. But it also allows you to create 3D models. Now, mind you, if you do decide to do something like this yourself, you're gonna need quite a powerful PC for this. First, I tried rendering this on my NAS, which has a 3600x and 16 gigs of RAM and it wasn't enough. It wouldn't cut it. So I had to render it on my PC and that still took five hours. The whole thing was taking up like 32 gigabytes of RAM and sometimes even a bit more. So it does require quite a bit of power to get a 3D model from 830 images. If you were trying to work on something smaller, you might have a bit more luck on a less powerful computer. But in the end, we did end up with a 3D model. And let me tell you, if you're looking at it from far away, you will be quite impressed. It actually came out looking really, really nice. And just to have a 3D model of a cliffside or something you want to 3D print, for example, this would absolutely work. But I wanted to take it a step further. I wanted to throw it into virtual reality and actually explore the 3D model, see what it looks like, and see how accurate and detailed it truly is. And this is where things started falling apart. It turns out that when you get closer to the 3D model or onto the 3D model, 
things aren't exactly as they might at first seem. The model itself, while it might be accurate, the textures are not very high detail. And I do wonder why this is, as every image taken by the drone was taken in a very high resolution, and if I zoom in on the image itself, it still is very nice and detailed. So I do wonder why that got bumped down when it got turned into a 3D model. Maybe some of you guys know the answer to that and can comment down below. I think it's fair to say that some things came out absolutely incredibly. For example, the cliffside looks amazing inside VR chat. I just need to do something about the water as the drone really didn't like the waves. But then other things like this building here would certainly benefit from having more images taken around it. And that is exactly what I'm going to do later on. With more images surrounding an object or more images at a 45 degree angle, the process has more things to work off of and doesn't have to imagine things are there or just kind of hope for the best. Clearly here, it didn't have enough in certain places. Things like bushes also didn't turn out incredible, it just kind of took them all as one solid object, but to be honest I can't exactly blame it here as the drone was 25 meters up in the air, so it can't see that much detail. But the model is still certainly recognizable. And while you can't recognize faces, or thankfully license plates on it, you can certainly recognize landmarks, and some stairs even look like stairs. Now, I do think I can make this look a lot better, and I will actually be updating the map on VRChat, and hopefully if I get it to a point that I find acceptable, I will make it public for you guys to be able to visit it. However, for now, while it's acceptable to me, and I'm definitely going to be chilling out in it from time to time, I don't actually feel comfortable sharing this. I want to bring the best foot forward, and I don't think that this is it. That and a skybox needs to be added, and some water for the beach side, and from there I actually think some really interesting things could be made out of this. That and I need to reduce the mesh size as my PC was already struggling quite a bit. But either way, I do find this a really, really interesting concept. I know a ton of game makers out there are already using photogrammetry at a much larger scale to bring maps and worlds and objects into their game. It's absolutely incredible what people can do with this and you can also play around with it yourself. Photogrammetry is not limited to drones, it's just going to be a lot harder to do it with a phone. As long as you have enough images, you can throw them into a software on your computer and it should be able to process it into a 3D model. Newer phones are going to do better here than older ones as the more detail the better and you can even do it with a DSLR camera. I am very happy with the results here. It's the first thing that I have ever turned into photogrammetry of this size. I mean, this is absolutely massive. And I must say, for that, it came out pretty well. So that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know if you guys have ever done anything with photogrammetry down below. And let me know if you would be interested in checking out this world if I make it public in VR chat. As usual, if you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And thank you so, so much to all the amazing Patreons that are currently supporting this channel. Those names are going off to my right right now. You guys are helping me out so much. Seriously, I cannot thank you enough. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.